Hey there, this is Rosie Highsmith at Thinkster, and in this brief video, I'm going to show you how to create a reactive form in Angular. Feel free to follow along using the Stack Blitz link below, pausing as often as you need. If you want to check out my full course on reactive forms, where I cover this more in detail, go through hands-on exercises, and tackle validation, the link for that is below as well. Now let's move on over to Stack Blitz. As you can see, we're going to build an Animal Shelter volunteer form. The user will enter some personal info, preferred location, what animals they might want to work with, and a dynamic amount of references. Right now, we just have some basic code in the template that isn't bound to anything, but we do have a skeleton of what's to come. The first thing we'll need to do is import reactive forms module in the app module here. Let's replace forms module, which would be used for a basic template driven form. And since most logic for the form is written in the component, let's head over there. We'll be using quite a few classes from Angular Forms, but to start, let's import form group. We'll represent our entire form with a form group, which is a way to group together controls in a form. And it's one of the three Angular form building blocks. This form group will allow us to track values and status of the form. I'll add a member to the class called volunteer form, and I'll give it a type of form group. We'll need to initialize the volunteer form to hold other controls, but first let's import and add form builder as well. The form builder service from Angular Forms is not necessary, but it does provide us a syntactic sugar to reduce the amount of code we need to generate controls. So we'll also need to inject that into our constructor. Now let's get started on actually initializing our form. I'm going to create a method called initialize form, which we'll call from ng on init. And inside of this, we're going to grab our volunteer form and we'll initialize it to a form group that'll contain all the other controls in our form. When you initialize a form group, it expects an object that contains key value pairs. Let's start off with just a couple controls for the name and phone number. These will be form controls, another one of the three Angular form building blocks. Form controls are the most atomic of the building blocks, and that's because ultimately all the building blocks can break down into form controls. For a simple form control, we'll just define a key and a value, like so. We'll just put an initial name here. And then let's also add phone number and set it to an empty string. For the select preferred location dropdown, we can also use a form control. Now for the animal section, we're going to create a nested form group since all of these controls are related. To do this, we'll add a key for the form group. We'll call it animals. Then similar to volunteer form, we'll call the form builder group method. And inside of this, we'll create three form controls for dogs, cats, and reptiles. I'm going to set them all to false so that they start unchecked. Now for the last references control, I want the user to be able to add or remove as many the references form array. as they want. We want to dynamically create controls, which is a perfect use case for the final Angular building block. We'll add another control called references. And we'll call the form builder array method. This method expects an array, and inside of that array, we'll create an empty form control using the form builder control method. And that's it for initializing the form. Before we move on, I also want to add an on submit so that we can log the form and inspect it when we click the apply button. Let's also add a getter for references. That way we can loop over it in the template and access it. And we'll be expecting a return type of a form array. This will need to get imported from Angular Forms. So I'll just automatically do that here. All right, now it's time to bind this new form group to its controls in the template. 
To start off, we'll wrap everything but the H1 header in a form tag. Then we'll add the form group directive to bind it to our volunteer form. Now the controls inside the form group also need to be bound to their associated controls with directives. For form controls inside of a form group, we use the form control name directive. So let's add that on the first name. That gets bound to the key we defined in the component. And we'll do the same thing for phone number and preferred location. And you can see that the first name is bound properly as we have that initial name here value. Okay, then for the nested form group of animals, we'll use a different directive than the top level form group because it is nested. We'll use form group name, and that's set to animals. All of its internal form controls will also have the same form control name. Okay, the last field we have to bind is references. Since this is a form array, we'll use the form array name directive. We'll give it the references key. Then since it contains a dynamic number of controls, we need to loop over them. So let's add an ng4. And we'll define each of them as a ref. Note here that I added a controls off of references. And since it's dynamic, we can track each item with an index, so I'll add that. Now each input is a form control, so I'll property bind it to a form control name directive, passing in the index. Now that we've properly bound the form, we still need to add the ng-submit event to bind to our new onSubmit method. So let's add that on the form tag. Just a couple more things in the template. The add and remove buttons don't do anything for the references and selecting a location doesn't work yet. So let's add a few events. Let's add a change event and we'll bind it to a method called select location. We'll pass in the DOM event so that we can grab the user's selection. And then down on the remove and add, we'll just make sure that we have some click events that bind to new methods. And for remove email, we actually need to pass in the index. That way we can identify which one we've removed. And we'll add the add email click handler. Let's head back over to the component to complete these methods. Let's start with the add and remove email methods for references. So let's grab the references form array. And to add to the form array, we'll use push. And let's just create a new form control. Let's also add the remove email method. Remember that this takes in an index. And we'll use the remove at method, passing in that index. And we can quickly test this out. Awesome, we can add one and we can remove it. Let's also add the method to select the location. This will allow us to programmatically update a form control. This takes in an event. And to update a form group partially, we'll use the patch value method. This requires the key of the control we're going to change and the value that we're going to set it to, which is the event target value that the user has selected in the dropdown. Finally, let's update a bit of the form and submit it so we can check out how the form looks in the console. And I'll hit apply. That should trigger our ng submit event. And let me expand this a little bit. This form group we see here is actually called the form model. When we created an instance of the volunteer form, all the values, status, properties, and child controls are tracked through the form model. Since we bound everything to the template, when the user makes a change to the form, we'll see an accurate representation through their form model. Opening up the controls, then the phone number, we see it also has value, status, and properties. 
There are so many things we can tap into with reactive forms. We've done so much in these past few minutes. We've used all of Angular Form's building blocks, form control, form group, and the dynamic form array to create a form that's bound to the template. We've also updated a control programmatically, and we can remove and add controls dynamically in the form array. Great job. Thanks for joining me in building a reactive form in 10 minutes. If you'd like to see more content like this, check out Thinkster's other Angular courses. And as I mentioned earlier, I also have a full course on intro to reactive forms in Angular, which covers even more, including how to validate the form. The link for that course is below. Hope to see you there.